Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Today we are going to talk about the original Novation base station. The keyboard version of this monophonic synth was the second product ever created by Novation, right after the MM10, a MIDI keyboard for the Yamaha QY10. Fun fact, I have a QY10 and it would be ideal Bad Gear material, if I took off half a year to finally understand how to operate this cursed VHS cassette. It was released in 1993 when producers wanted a substitute for the Roland's TB303 because many genres with the acid prefix were really popular back then. The rack version of the base station we are taking a look at in this episode hits the market one year later. Keep in mind that the early 90s were dominated by digital synthesizers, so the release of the base station turned quite some heads and heralded a renaissance of real-time synth tweaking. At the first glance, the base station seems to be among the best the 90s had to offer. MIDI and CV connectivity, a filter input and 18 unsettlingly wobbly knobs. That sounds like a lot, but I always have the feeling that I need more when I tweak the synth and I missed the original value LED we all know and love from, for example, the Korg Microkorg. You can save your sounds and, yes, Please discuss in the comments whether DCOs are real analog oscillators or not. Speaking of oscillators, there are two of them with extensive tuning options. Exceptional for a 303 type synth. There is also an LFO, two independent envelopes, a surprisingly complex modulation section and you can switch the filter between 12 and 24 dB. Novation also released the Super Bass Station, the Bass Station 2, a Bass Station plugin and I even saw some Bass Station t-shirts on the internet. The original can be found for prices ranging from 200 to 400 units of your preferred major western currency. I bought mine over 10 years ago for 150 euro. Although most people are happy with their base stations, there is also a vocal minority that argues that the synth is not worthy of its name. You have already heard the synth in our little intro tune. We all knew that it was going to get the job done. There is a lot of talk about the base station having no bass. Let's find out if there is some truth to it. Without a doubt, the bass station can move plenty of air. There is of course some drop in bass frequencies when employing higher resonance settings, but we are, after all, talking about a synthesizer in the tradition of the TB303. 303s and effects go together well. I wanna know how pedal friendly that Novation rack unit really is. It sounds really nice with the delay, but I had a hard time finding the right distortion for it. I went with the boss metal zone because of the sentimental value it has to me. Apart from that, the synth seems to take FX rather well. Let's beef it up with plugins in this bass station only synth wave and roll instrumental. The original Novation base station is, of course, a classic. 
It was designed with acid sounds in mind, but it can also provide squelchy leads and mogish basses for days. Nevertheless, I can understand the critics. The controls are super fiddly and there are more versatile filters. I'm a big monosynth fan and although I like the bass station in theory, it never got a lot of actual use in my setup. Novation fans, please don't butcher me in the comments. As adults, we should be able to agree to disagree. I always found the base station to be a little one-dimensional and sterile sounding. What is more, even a DX7 gives you more information on what is going on on the inside while programming a sound. On the other hand, I will most probably never part with that little rack synth. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like and subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.